Okay, we're going to look here at the definition of continuity for vector valued functions. So you can see here that I've typed kind of a skeleton to hopefully help you recall the definition of continuity for real valued functions. So that would be functions like y equals f of x that you worked with in calculus one. So I put three bullet points here because there are really three criteria that you're always going to be looking for when you're trying to determine whether a function is continuous at a specific value x equals a. Uh, first of all, the function output is going to have to be defined or you might say it exists. Uh, the limit as x approaches a of f of x has to exist and they have to be equal. So sometimes we write uh, all three of those just as one statement, we might say f of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x. And when we write that statement, that would imply that the function output exists, that the limit exists, and that they are equal. So you can kind of just shortcut it, even though it's important to understand there are really three things you're saying when you do that. Okay, so if we want to now take this definition and extend this now to vector valued functions, so we're going to be talking about functions r of t, like we've been working with recently. So our input's a real number, output is a vector. So when we think about uh, that function r of t, and where we might say that it is continuous, uh, that's defined in terms of the input. So we would say here at t equals a, right? So the main difference here is really just notation, the function name and what we're calling the input. That's really the only difference so far. Then we really are going to be looking for the same criteria. The function output exists at t equals a and the limit exists as t approaches a of the r of t function and they are equal. So again, that's really three things. Function output exists, limit exists, and they are equal to each other. All right, so you should be able to write down that definition. It's not much of a stretch from what you learned in calculus one. All right, and down here below we've got a corollary, which is a direct result of something that we've already talked about. So uh, I want to think a little bit about what this definition of continuity exactly means in terms of how you would uh, examine whether you have a function output or a limit existing. So we want to just kind of connect back to thinking about how we evaluate r of a, if I have a function as we have down here in the corollary, r of t equals f of t, g of t, h of t, uh, we would just find r of a by finding the outputs of each of those component functions and then that would give you your output. So you would find the output for r of a by just evaluating each of those component functions, determining the output for each component function. The other thing is that when we talked about finding limits of vector valued functions, we had a definition and then a theorem that told us that we can find limits of vector valued functions uh, and that limit would exist if and only if. So the limit as t approaches a of r of t exists and is l, we'll call that a vector l, if and only if, we had this in a previous uh, video that we looked at, uh, the limit of the component functions all exists. Uh, f of t is equal to, I think we called it L1 in that previous video, and the limit as t approaches a of g of t was L2, and the limit as t approaches a of h of t, I think we called that one L3. And so the key thing there is that we would determine whether that limit exists by examining the limit of each of the component functions often, and then determining if those two things are equal, we can really kind of look at that component by component. So we're really just looking at each individual component and whether the limit is equal to the function value uh, at that component. All right, so this corollary really tells us kind of how we might check if I have a vector valued function to determine whether that vector valued function is continuous at t equals a. This is also an if and only if, so it's a double implication means if I know one thing is true I get the other thing. Uh, if and only if are three component functions f of t, 
g of t and h of t are all continuous at that same value at that t equals a. All right, so this tells us that we can really just use our knowledge of ordinary uh, real valued functions. Remember that that's what the f of t, g of t, and h of t are. They are really just real valued functions, just like y equals f of x. It's just got t as our input variable. So we can use our knowledge about continuity of real valued functions in order to answer questions about continuity of vector valued functions. All right, I'm going to scroll up here. And I've got an example typed here. And what we want to do is look at this vector valued function and determine where is this r of t continuous. So we can really answer that question by looking at the three component functions and thinking about where each of those are continuous. So our f of t is a natural log of t plus 3, and then the g of t and our h of t. Okay, so for all three of these functions, continuity is really about domain. The, pro the issues on any of these three functions where they would have some trouble with continuity uh, would be any values that are not in the domain of the function. That's not always true, but that's true of these three functions. Uh, so for this first one, we need that t plus 3 inside the logarithm to be positive in order for that function to be defined as a real number output. So we'd say that f of t function is continuous on the interval from negative 3 to infinity. I need t plus 3 to be greater than 0, so that happens when t is greater than negative 3. Uh, in the g of t function, I need to avoid t equals 1. That would make the denominator 0. Uh, so we would say that that g of t function is continuous on the interval from negative infinity to 1 or from 1 to infinity. So if I just exclude t equals 1. And then on the third component function, again, it's really an issue of denominator here. I need to avoid t equals 2 and t equals negative 2. So I would say that that function is continuous on the interval from negative infinity to negative 2 or negative 2 to 2 or 2 to infinity. Okay, so in order to answer the question about r of t, which is what we were really interested in, uh, I need to really kind of tie together all three of these restrictions that I've got here, all three of these intervals uh, that we have, and think about any restrictions we have. Uh, for the f of t function, we're restricted value to values greater than negative 3. So even though I could have values less than negative 3 on the other two component functions, because I have that restriction there, I'm going to need to make sure that uh, I also restrict for the other ones. If I can't plug in a t value or I can't find a limit at a t value in one of the component functions, then I can't do it for the r of t function. So I need t to be greater than negative 3. And then in these other ones, I need to exclude t equals 1 uh, for the g of t function. And I also need to then exclude t equals 2 and t equals negative 2. All right, so when I tie all of that together and answer the question we were interested in at the beginning of this problem, where is r of t continuous? We would say that r of t is continuous on the interval from negative 3 to, and then the first value I need to exclude is negative 2, and then from negative 2 to the next value that I need to exclude is 1 and then from 1 to 2, and then finally from 2 to infinity. So any of those intervals there uh, would be where r of t is continuous. All right, so try some homework problems like that, and uh, then you can watch the next video.